Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we will be talking about uh, Image, which is actually a um, GitHub repository that I found that actually does a uh, like photo album type situation where you essentially can upload photos, kind of organize them, and just kind of have your own photo album on your own server. Um, I know I've seen like a lot of posts that are like, hey, how do I manage, you know, like four terabytes worth of images? And this is one of the ones, one of the programs that, that came up and want to kind of just show you guys how to install it and how to upload it and, and kind of organize a little bit. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content and want to sponsor me, or send me some free swag and hardware, always appreciate it. My email is in the description below. So, okay, let's get started, guys. <sighs> All right, so we're all logging to our server. Um, root add, and the IP will be this. So let's log in. The first thing we will do is actually install Docker, um, because this is also another Docker container repository dunk container that we can grab from their site. So while that installs, we will also update DNS here real quick and then go to the, the GitHub repo for it. So let's edit this. Boop, boop. Update the serial number. Image. In a... All right, and then... Add a commit, commit. All right. So now, if you look it up, image. Um, we can do Docker, but let's go to the GitHub repository real quick. So kind of a self-hosted backup, photo, photo and video backup solution. So it, it not only does photos, you can also upload videos. Um, the few things to note is be aware to read this disclaimer. You know, the project is very active. You know, bugs and things may change. And you don't want this app to be the only place you host your photos. Um, now, I think this is more more of a very good general sense for when you start doing home lab stuff. Um, the the thing is, you never you you want a backup strategy with your files. So the files that you really want to keep, you want to keep them in more than one place. Ideally, like two or three places, but definitely more than one place. So if you're planning to just throw your files all in here, that is probably not a good idea. So in a different video, probably in the future, now that I'm thinking about it, we'll probably show you how to like create a backup or some other place that you can store uh, backup files. Um, really, it's just probably create another server, do some like R syncs or something like that. Um, but having data in multiple places is always better than worse, but <clears throat> it's always a cost associated because you're like, well, I got like six terabytes of photos. That means if you copy it, that means you have to host 12 terabytes, right? It's, it's a lot more data. But in this case, this is just a fair warning. If you decide to set this up and, and you know, they put out a change and it like completely breaks, um, you're in control of your own data. So just make sure you have your data in more than one place. So, but anywho, um, taking a look, there's, there's a lot of options that you can actually do with this. What we will do in here, we'll go to the documentation, get to their getting started, install, and we will do their Docker compose steps. Um, so we got Docker, Docker installed and running. We will now install Docker compose. And then um, we will need to install git and wget. Yim <sighs> install git and wget. Actually, I don't think we need to install git. Um, oh, we only need a wget. It's okay though. You could install git to download their whole repo as opposed to just download their, their YAML file, but it, it doesn't make a difference here. So what we'll do here is we'll follow their directions. We'll make the dot image app directory in our home directory. So we'll change to it. So now we're in root dot um, image app. Um, we will get the Docker compose file. So let's grab that. Oh yeah, Docker compose, awesome. And then we'll grab their dot env file, which is where pretty much all the uh, variables that we will need to set, it's actually very, very nice because then essentially you don't have to set it in the file and any other you know docker compose files will just take the env also so that's good um we ignore the hardware acceleration not that big of a deal for us but if you're doing more like video and and, and rendering stuff you might need the video acceleration just to make sure everything renders 
um, in timely fashion. But we're not going to do any of that fancy stuff. But you can do it if you need it to here. So the next thing is you'll need to populate that env. There's a few things to populate in here. Um, so what we'll do is vi.env. So you can see, um, you know, upload directory where, uh, and we'll just do root at, at the end of the day. Actually, we'll just leave it as dot library because it will be actually in this directory. So image library. Um, the next few things is you want to update your API key to some random text and update host name. Oh, there's no password. Oh, DB password. These two right here. You want to update these to be different text um, because you don't want someone to know what the default password to your thing is, right? In this case, I'm just going to leave it as default, but you should not leave it as default unless you want someone to be like, oh, you have an image server. And if you didn't leave it, you got, I know what your API key and your DB password is, which is also another, not a good thing. But I'm going to just leave it for tutorial purposes here, um, but you should change it. And then we will do a Docker compose up D. So this will pull all the containers that are needed. So that it looks like there's a server, there's the database. There's a lot of things and it's kind of flashing on my screen. So if, uh, if, if you don't like this, please stop looking at my screen for a few seconds <laughs> as this kind of goes. Um, damn, they have a lot of containers. They got the types of container. So, so the, the, this is like a multitude of different projects actually. Um, so actually if we go back, I think we can look at their Docker file. What's a Docker file? Docker, Docker Compose, so we can look at it. So they got the server itself, a few microservices, uh, oh, the, the database, TypeSense, Redis, um, Redis for, for caching. We got mach machine learning. Oh, there's some machine learning stuff in this. Okay, and then you got the website, and then you, obviously the TypeSense Redis database. Then you got the proxy. Uh, we could probably update the the proxy if we needed to. Oh, do we actually update? Oh, interesting. It doesn't actually, there wasn't a uh, URL thingy. Okay, well, well, we'll see if it works. So what we'll do is HTTP and then go to image dragon local. And actually I think it's a unique port too, actually. So if we do a Docker PSA, um, 2283. You could probably set this differently in your doc Docker file in here. 2283. Yeah, you, you could you could set it differently if you wanted to in your Docker file, um, but I didn't. So by default, if you're just installing it, it's on 2283. 2283. So this is getting started. You'll enter your admin email, your admin password, your first name, your last name, and then it will create your account essentially. Mm, all right. And this is the admin account too, to administer. So we'll do that. Now we can do this. Boop, 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 boop. And now we have logged in. We will automatically switch it to night mode because that is the best mode ever. Um, and you can see that it's kind of like your your little bit default kind of, like, like a photo album, honestly, at the end of the day. Um, there's some nice things that you can see over on the side where um, it probably grabs the metadata here to, to show you where photos have been taken from the metadata. There's some sharing so you can share your albums also. Um, with other people that can access the service. So if you're like, hey, I need, I, I went to this event, you had like five photographers and you need them to all like um, look at all these videos or, or you have editors. Sorry, I think this is, I don't know if you can do shared, I would have to take a look if shared albums work the other way where other people can upload. But you can share this out with like your editors if you if you if you had a lot of photos and they and you need them to edit. Um, you can share that. Um, it looks like so definitely it goes that way. I don't know if it goes the other way, but we can play around with that later. So, but first things first, let's upload an image. So if you watch my pair drop video, you we uploaded we sent an image from my phone to this computer and it was just us eating dim sum, um, all the dim sum food. Um, so we can see here. It opens up like a normal, you know, picture kind of in the in the GUI. Um, nothing, nothing too, you know, complicated or fancy. There's a few video buttons you can push. You got some image details also. Um, there really isn't that much. There's the download button, so you can download it also from your place to your computer. You can add it to an album, um, set some 
options. So nothing, nothing like too crazy. Um, the real question is, I don't know how this, this would have been in Europe. I was in Europe at this time when I took this picture. I don't know if the metadata stuck over after I, I pair dropped it. Um, but it doesn't look like it's, it's actually in there. So it's, it's fine though, but you, the, there's definitely a lot of things that you can kind of explore in here. Um, also you can upload uh, videos too, so not necessarily limited to just the photos, but you can see it's kind of just like a normal interface in regards to how you, you would use it. So you can create albums, you can archive stuff, and you can just add photos as needed. So um, easy kind of way to have a photo album in, in, in this artist server and kind of use it as a backup, but as a like another backup to a backup. So there you go, guys. That is how you set up an image server. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.